Hello, I'm Malcolm Skinner and I'm a solicitor in the LexisNexis PSL private client team. Today I'm joined by Gary Ashford, a partner at Harbottle and Lewis, specialising in tax disputes and investigations, and we'll be discussing some aspects of tax evasion. Uh, so Gary, we hear a lot about HMRC getting tough on offshore tax evasion. Is this correct? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you may have seen over the years um, a sort of steady flow of HMRC increasing the, um, the amount of powers they've, they've got, Malcolm. I mean, I mean essentially, um, the HMRC introduced the offshore evasion strategy in 2009, and since then you know, there's been a steady increase of, 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 of new powers. Alongside that, we've seen HMRC launching a number of disclosure facilities mm -hmm. over the years, the Liechtenstein Disclosure Facility, the, the Crown Dependency Disclosure Facilities, of which you'll, you'll be aware. Um, all of those facilities came to an end in December 15. Um, HMRC have said that they will uh, be launching another disclosure facility, but we haven't seen that as yet. And what we are, um, we do understand, is that any new facility will not be as generous as the past. So I think we've got a, a hardening of HMRC's position mm. in that area, really. Yes. So what broadly are the recently proposed changes? Well, Finance Bill um, 2016 has got a number of fairly important changes in there. Um, you know, we've seen a steady increase in, in HMRC in terms of, uh, you know, civil penalties. Uh, and we would have probably expected to see that anyway, and we, we can maybe talk about that in, in, in a little while. But we've also got HMRC um, introducing a corporate criminal offence. Mm. We've got a strict liability offence that mm. many people have been talking about for a little while now. Uh, and we've also got uh, a new civil offence for those who um, enable um, individuals to commit ta uh, offshore tax evasion. Looking at the proposed criminal corporate offence, yes. um, how will this work and what safeguards are there? Okay, so the, 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 the corporate criminal offence was originally announced in 2015 and we expect it to probably arrive around two, 2017. There's been a number of consultations since then uh, and we've already got draft legislation um, out on, on, the, on, the, on this subject. The way HMRC have said the, 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 um, the offence will operate is almost in three stages. Mm -hmm. There'll be a first stage whereby um, there must be a person who's committed criminal tax evasion to criminal standard. The second stage then you must have a, a, a body, that's either a corporate body or an LLP or a partnership, whereby uh, a person associated with that body has criminally facilitated the person in conducting the, the, the criminal tax evasion. Then there's a third stage to this, whereby um, you know, you, the, the HMRC will look at whether the body has itself put in place reasonable steps to prevent that body from um, facilitating that, uh, or their, their person from facilitating that criminal tax mm. evasion event. So, so there are three stages to this. How tax evasion itself would be defined is you know, there are two parts to the fence. It far, starts off as looking at UK tax evasion and it also looks at overseas tax evasion. UK tax evasion starts to look at, um, you know, the, 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 the general sort of um, UK uh, common law offences, such as fraudulent evasion of tax. Right. Um, the, the overseas tax evasion then looks at what offences are in place in that overseas jurisdiction that um, links to criminal tax evasion and then also looks back to the UK to see whether the UK have got a similar offence that could not be applied there. Okay. You mentioned strict liability criminal offence. Uh, can you give us a, a little more on that? Uh, in terms of individuals? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, yes. So the individual's um, uh, uh, stri um, strict liability offence, this has been much talked about mm. by all the professional bodies. Um, and it's essentially, really, you know, HMRC are break breaking new ground, really, to some extent in the tax world. Um, as it says, it's a strict liability offence without any behavioural uh, underpin. Right. So whether you are careless, whether you are deliberate, or whether you've, you know, you, you have um, you know, sought out, as I say, to, to do this deliberately, is, is almost irrelevant from the strict liability offence. What you need to have, you need to have a situation whereby an individual either fa fails to declare, um, submits a late return, or submits an incorrect return in relation to capital gains and income tax relating to an offshore matter. That would trigger 
the, the, in, the, in, the entry point mm -hmm. for this strict liability offence. You, you then have a situation whereby um, the person, there, there are some safeguards, um, HMRC are proposing um, to apply a 25,000 a year um, safeguard in there. The person also has the ability to, to demonstrate they've got a reasonable excuse for the failure. So, so there are some safeguards in there. And actually HMRC are, are, are more recently um, been proposing to link the strict liability offence only to jurisdictions who have not committed themselves to full exchange of information. Okay. So we naturally now move on to the penalties yeah. for <laughs> offshore tax offences. Uh, uh, what are they and are further changes proposed in respect of them? Well, in 2011 you'll be aware that HMRC introduced yeah. the offshore penalty regime and all that did was pick up the, the original uh, new penalty regime introduced in 2007-2008, which ultimately gave, allows at the, at the highest level HMRC to charge 100% penalty mm. for, for, a, for a tax offence. Um, the offshore penalty regime then um, looked to increase that penalty depending again on the um, level of transparency in place on the relevant jurisdiction. So at the most extreme end, a jurisdiction that exchanged no information with the UK, a 100% penalty could be 200%. Evans. So, so, so that's, the, that's, that's the, the original offshore penalty regime. Right. What we're looking to do, or HMRC are looking to do in 2016, you'll, you'll be aware that within the penalty regime, there's, the, there's minimum penalties. And the, and the difference between penalties between an unprompted um, disclosure and a prompted disclosure. Mm -hmm. the, new, the new system will essentially increase by 10% that minimum penalty under the, under the offshore penalty regime. So it, it tweaks it rather than significantly changes it. Mm -hmm. But what HMRC are also bringing in is an asset-based penalty, which will essentially look at the value of the asset and if they apply this penalty, they'll charge 10% on the value of the asset. Right. Generally, do you expect HMRC to use these powers more in the years to come? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's very clear. If you you know you 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 know you've you've you've, you've seen all the, the the news and these things, you know the, the direction of travel. At HMRC have said very clearly, you know, as part of the revision strategy, they will continue with this approach. Um, they have sought the additional powers um, from, from Parliament and been given those powers. Mm. Um, so yes, you expect HMRC to do a lot more investigation. Um, we are already aware from them that um, as they head towards 2017 and the, you know, the, in the entry point of common reporting standard, um, that HMRC are almost saying to people, this is your last chance mm. to, to really sort of make voluntary disclosures. If we get to a point, the HMRC gets to a point in 2017 and a disclosure has not been made, then the person will, the, the, the powers are there for them to, to you know, significantly penalise someone who they um, decide to investigate based on the information they receive, Malcolm. Heavens, well, watch this space. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Gary, that's very helpful, very informative. I'm Thank much you. Obliged. Thank you very much.